right, we've been doing a series called Reigning in Life in Christ. Amen. And as I, uh, they get our scriptures up, I'm going to go ahead and wet my whistle a little bit. We just got back from Oregon seeing our granddaughter graduate in her, what is it called? Commencement. And we just, it was fun, but commencement, if there's anything more than 20 people, which was 800 to 1,000, you've got to sit there until everybody's through. Hello. And remember to pray for pastor next time he ever goes. We have some others coming up. Go to my commencement to bring a pillow. You know, that's called wisdom. <laughs> and boy, did we sit long, didn't we? But you know, we saw our granddaughter graduate and go, and, so, and God has done such a wonder. Someday ask us about her. She's an absolute miracle. Amen. If you see me fiddling with this a little bit, I still need to make an adjustment. It keeps moving down. Pretty soon you'll hear me swallow. It'll be pretty good. All right, so reigning in life in Christ, we're going to call this, and I hope you're taking notes, faith, hope, and charity, and their purpose. You know, Paul points out that it's very important that we know about faith, hope, and love. Amen? And we need to know their function and purpose. So let me read, go ahead to read the scripture above head. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 22. She's got it printed up here for me so I don't have to turn around. I don't want to blind you. I was going to make fun of that for a little while, but please don't get tired of it. Amen. Okay. Matthew 11, look at verse 22. Read along with me. But I say to you, I will be more tolerable, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Zidon in the day of judgment than for you. And your, you, Capernaum, you who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. For I, and if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. Now Jesus is getting ready to talk to his disciples. He's ready to say, I'm going to give you and deliver a kingdom. Amen. But I say to you, verse 24, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and in, in the judgment than for you. Why? Because they're rejecting Jesus. How many know that we should be accepting God's gift of salvation? Because number one, this earth is a prison. Okay. And the only way to get off it is to accept Jesus. Would you agree? And by accepting Jesus, not a religion, and walking with him, he's able to lead us not only out of darkness, but out of trouble as well. Would you agree? And he's given us a marvelous kingdom, and that kingdom is able to keep us safe. It's kind of like you, Michael. You live in a gated home. It kind of keeps you safe. Well, you have an invisible kingdom that you also live in. Go with me now to Matthew 9, 27. Listen to this. And when Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. In verse 28, and we had come into the house, the blind man came to him, and Jesus said to him, do you believe that I am able to do this? What did they ask? We want our sight, right? Are you able to believe? Now listen, God has your life, right? You turned it over to him. Are you able to believe that he'll take good care of you? Amen. Amen. And has he done well? You, know, you say, well, why, why do some people have tr struggles, listen, and others not so much struggle? It depends on how you let go of your life and allow God to take control of, of our life. It's actually an exchange. Didn't Jesus die for our sin so that we could, through our faith in him, can receive his righteousness? But we still have to go on. We still have to walk with the Lord and learn how to walk in his freedom. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we are in the house of the Lord. We are the house of the Lord. We're dwelling together in the Lord. Amen. 
But where does the trouble come? When our eyes slip off of the Lord onto ourself, onto the problems of life. And I, I like to call it the woulda, couldas. Does anybody suffer from them? If I just should have, maybe if I would have, maybe if I just could have, you see, don't do that. You can, because the Bible says, BJ, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But we have to be, walk with him, say amen. And so he says, look, he says to the blind man in verse 29, then he touched these blind men and he says, according to your what? Yeah, according to your faith, be it done unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them. And this people don't understand this. Please don't tell anybody. Now, we're in a different time than Jesus was. First of all, Jesus was never supposed. This is good. I'm going to have to cure this this week, this little microphone. Jesus was never supposed to draw himself, draw attention to himself while he was before the cross. Why? Because it might stop, it might tip the enemy off of what he's about to do. He's about to be the last sacrifice. And how many here know that we don't want to tip the enemy off? Amen. So we walk in the spirit. We keep in the realm of the spirit. But anyway, so he goes and he says, look, don't tell anybody. Well, what did they go do? They wasn't told everybody. Right? Well, now it's funny. God does a miracle in your church, in your life, and we keep quiet about it. <laughs> we don't tell anybody. God wants us now in the New Testament to tell everybody what he's doing in your life, as long as we're not braggadocious. Say amen, somebody. All right, so let's get in our lesson. Amen. First, I want to bless you this Father's Day. We're going to cover four areas. Everyone say four areas. Okay, number one. There are two kinds of faith. There are two kinds of faith, and Christians need to know it. We'll talk about it. Number two, the purpose of hope and the word pictures it paints. Purpose of hope and the word pictures it paints. Thirdly, Having faith brings substance or materializations. Amen? Be it done unto you according to your faith. And then number four, love or charity. I love the old King James. Charity because it shows being charitable. But really charity is God's agape love. We figured that out. Amen. Charity, God's love, in action. So we're going to cover those areas quickly. There are two kinds of faith. You'll find them out. Two, the purpose of hope, painting word pictures. Three, having faith will bring substance. And then fourthly, charity, or doing, or love in action, is really what God wants. Say amen. Anybody can say I love you. And, and not that we have to prove we love people, but to love somebody beyond themselves to God. My pastor told us years ago, if you treat somebody like a prince, they'll at least, even if they don't feel like they are, they'll want to be one. You treat people rude, and they'll treat you rude. And the whole system right now just seems to be so uptight. But, you know, it is mellowing. How many have seen some changes in the last year? People out sharing at the parks again, swimming, loving people, opening up to one another. Churches are filling up everywhere. Now, Lord, bless this church. Can you say amen? First point, there are two kinds of faith. All right, go with me to Romans chapter 1, please, verse 16. And 17. Here we go with the Jerusalem cup. Also, grape juice is great for your, um, your throat. 
I have a little grandson, if he's watching today, and I'm sure maybe he is. He, he would always say to me, tone it down, Grandpa, because I'm a preacher. And so when I get excited, my volume comes up. Have you ever noticed? I think you do. Anyway, so, ah, you know, and so let me, let me tell you, when I get excited, if I do that, that means I'm excited. Amen? All right, so point one. There are two kinds of faith. Romans 1, verse 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Good gospel is always good news. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation. To everyone to believe. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. Remember, God reveals we get the word by revelation, revealed from faith to faith. Do you see that? Everyone say faith to faith. You see, I didn't even, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you on a journey. When, when I was in the world, didn't know God, somebody had to come to me and share Jesus. And I probably blew them off and told them, nah. But see, when they shared Jesus, little faith came. I didn't have any, but they passed with a little bit of Jesus, some faith. Now I'm thinking about Jesus. Somebody came along and watered it, some, as you get the point. So faith is actually given by grace. So you didn't even have faith to be saved. Somebody shared Jesus. That's why we were to share Jesus. And faith came. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the first faith that you get, once you accept the Lord. You have faith to accept the Lord. So that's the beginning of your faith. That's the beginning of your faith. To accept, to, to believe in God, to accept the Lord. But how many know God doesn't leave it there? Here's the neat thing. Christians sometimes don't realize this. Once you have Jesus in your heart, now you have God's faith. Hello? When you receive Jesus in your heart, you don't longer have your faith. Your faith and God's faith are now mingled in your spirit, man. You have God's faith. And this is where the enemy keeps misguiding Christians. They think they have to really believe. Well, yeah, but it's not like that. What they need to do is sit down and trust. You see, when I was young, I... Believing to me was a calisthenic, but as I grew older, believing to me is a trust. As you grow in the Lord, God's faith in you takes over. You start to be able to believe for all kinds of wonderful things, where before you couldn't believe it. Why? Because you're growing from faith to faith. The start of your faith now you're born again. Now God's in you, churning and working, and your faith is developing. But it says, now abideth faith, hope, and charity. So we need to know as we grow in faith where hope comes along. We're going to get to that. But let me go ahead and continue to read this to you. Verse 17. For in it, in faith... The righteousness of God is revealed. You have to believe in God for God wanting to tell you and show you things. You've got to have God in your heart, Michael, so he will. So when you're out there doing the work and all, he's talking to you. He's sharing things to you. You're showing you how to love your mom and how to take care of that wonderful property, isn't he? He's doing that, isn't he? Amen. That's the relationship we have with God. Now, go with me to James chapter 2. Look what it says further on this point. James 2, verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone would say, I have faith, but do not have the works? Thus also, faith by itself, if it does not have works that follow, is dead. In other words, there's no energy in it. You believe that there is one God. How many here believe there's one God? Yes. And you do well. But listen, even the devils believe. So you got to do something more than believe there's a God. 
You have to have action and walk with them and be with them. Say amen, somebody. Amen. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe, and they tremble. But do you want to know, oh foolish men, that faith without actions that show that you believe in God, faith is dead. Now, a couple of points I'm going to give you. Number one, we know that a person must first believe and there and receive God, and that God rewards to those who constantly come to him. Number two, remember, faith comes by hearing, and the ability to hear spiritually develops by the word of God. So God wants you in the word so he can develop our spiritual hearing. Thirdly, we have a new language. Yes, this is a language of faith. Now, I'm not talking about tongues here. I'm talking about the way we should talk should be faith, should be full of hope, should be encouraging one another. Can you say amen? And if it isn't, then we're passing on something. It is not necessarily good news. Now, there are times we have to correct somebody. We have to inspire somebody and sometimes a little common sense. And so when I talk to my son, I try not to talk down. I try to say, son, you know, there's so much more that you can experience, but you're not trying harder. So I have to get him to want to try harder, but I can't do it by whacking him. Can you say amen? I have to do it by sharing with him, encouraging them, and still loving them no matter what. And it's tough. Say, oh, me. Fourthly, many will say, I believe in God, but don't put their faith in God, so you never see any fruits really develop. And we want them to develop with fruits. You are God's children. Every one of you desires a, a greater relationship with God. Let me tell you, it's not by works. It's by you spending time with him. He makes us into something beautiful because the devil wants to take that away from us. Thief comes to steal. God says, I come to give life. Okay, let's go on. And fifthly, church, once we receive Jesus, our faith is mixed with God's faith. Therefore, we have a loving trust. Instead of a agitated, I am believing God. I hope you get the little picture I have. In other words, God doesn't want you trying to physically believe anymore. You got your believers right in there. Remember when we talked about the believer? Every human being that's born, Michael, has inside them a want to believe. And so enemy comes along and shows them something. So they want to believe that that's true, but they find out it's not. Somebody comes along and shares Santa Claus, and they want to believe that that's true, but it is not. You see, the enemy does a lot of pictures, but they're false pictures. God comes along and gives us his word, gives us his son, gives us his kingdom, gives us the Holy Spirit so that we could hook up with Jesus and Jesus could teach and train us how to get revelation knowledge downloaded into our spirit man where we can walk in the freedoms and share, other, share to others the very miracle God that you and I so graciously have. Someone say happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Amen. A toast to you, Heavenly Father. So finally, let's go to this. Number two, the purpose of hope. Now, you guys know this, but I'm going to share this anyway because we have people watching. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to look at the first three verses here. God is always in the now. Say that with me. And let me just paint a little, this will be a good short. God always dwells in the now, yet his now was then, and his now is tomorrow. God circumspects all time. We have time so we can allot how things are slipping by, and we can make note of certain things. He gave us the times and the seasons to keep clockwork and everything. But God is way beyond time. Can you say amen? So he already knows our tomorrow. Isn't that beautiful? So what do we do? True children of God are just hungry enough to go seek our Father to reveal our steps and our future. And we know they're all good. 
Hello? Say amen. And so we have to know that God circumspects all time. And we know that Satan does not. The devil is not in your future. Listen to me. The devil's not in your tomorrow. But when it, tomorrow comes, he's there. Hello? But just because something's there doesn't mean you have to hang around him. <laughs> you, you live in the kingdom. He can't even go where you're at. He has to call us out of this. Folks, let's look at what we have just quickly. We have Jesus Christ. The Bible says we have him in our heart. If I pal around with Jesus, is the devil going to hang around me? No. Not only that, but we have the Holy Spirit all around us. We have the armor of God on us. We have the angels all about us. We're filled. We've got to keep our mind up on those things. Why? Because it gives us trust and confidence. Why? Because when the devil starts playing with our head, we can grab our head and say, no, remember what we have. That's hope. I just described hope for you. Go out. God gave us his word, told us what we have, told us what we have it by faith. And it's right there. So he gives us word pictures so we can see to hope for it. Hello? If our eyes are only on the problem, then there's nothing to hope for. You want to hope for another problem? <laughs> Satan's kingdom is to get your eyes to stay on the earthly plane, this earthly physical realm only. Sure, we're to not ignore it, but I don't get my hope from it. I don't get my hope, even though I love him dearly, from what Scott says only to me and what I say to Scott, you see. Okay, so let's find out. You got it? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is, see the right now? God is in the now, now, yet he's in then and he's in the future. So now faith, our faith should be in the now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So if you're not in your Bible reading what God has given you, instead Satan has got you out studying Hebrew and look at all the false promises and the weird wax stuff. So it isn't painting any hope. Remember, hope's like a flashlight. Hello? And you got to go to the bathroom. Take the flashlight with you. It's nighttime. You have to have the word in front of you so that it gives you hope because the world's going to tell you you're a nobody or nothing. And Satan is not going to encourage you a bit unless it is to get in trouble. So now faith is the substance of the things that you see pictures of in the word of God. And it is the evidence of things not seen. You replace what you experience with the what God's word promises and it gives you hope and your faith goes into operation. For by it, the elders, those people that are older in the Lord, sustained or obtained a good testimony. Why? Because they're consistent by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. Your worlds, your life, the word worlds means your age or your life, were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. God says, take what you see in the word and replace it, walk with Jesus and replace that terrible vision and overcome with God's help and Bring the gospel and enjoy the good life, Michael. Amen. Be a giver. Help people out. And I know you do. Are you with me? Now let's look at another prime example of pointing this in Romans chapter 4, verse 17. This is about Abraham, how he believed God. But look at the word each. God who gives life to the dead, amen, and calls the things which do not exist as though they did, who, God, Abraham, contrary to hope. See, Abraham lived in an old body. But if all you do is focus on yourself and your creeks and your crannies and that, 
You see, that didn't affect him. So listen to what it says. Remember, his one hope was in his flesh and the deadness of Sarah's womb. But God spoke to him. Now his hope is up in the Lord. And guess what it does? It changes his body. Listen. This is contrary to hope. His, his condition of his body believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants become. And to being washed, or, or excuse me, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead uh, since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. And he did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith by why? How did, how did he get strengthened? By giving glory to God. Constantly, whether you see it or not, give glory to God and being fully convinced that it was he who had promised was able to perform. And there it became a father of many nations and it was put on his account because Jesus hadn't died and rose again yet. I consider you righteous, Abraham, because you believe in me. Say amen. amen. Now listen, Proverbs 13 verse 12 tells us on the same point, hope when it's put away. When, when people tell you, Scott, you're never going to make anything. And, you know, if you tell your children, you know, you'll never amount to any. Be careful of this. Don't do that. And I, I know you don't. When you take away their hope, when you take away their expectation, your childlike expectancy, you'll make them sick. Hope deferred or pushed away from people makes people sick, Proverbs, it says. Hello, are you with me? 13, 12. Proverbs 13, in the message, look up at this. Un this is really cool. Unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick. But a sudden good break by hearing good news makes your heart arise. Whoa! So please don't talk the obvious so much. Why didn't I? Why, 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 why? Where's the focus? It's not on God, it's on us. Satan's a master at getting our focus on the wrong thing because he knows you're a Polaroid camera. Click, zzz, click, zzz. what are you poking on? Click, zzz. everyone say the word. Amen. So everyone say, I got it. We're going to go to the third point. Having faith brings substance. First of all, if you're sick, you go to the word, find out what the word says about getting healed. When you do that, you give yourself hope. Now your faith and God's faith in you automatically has something, automatically has something to work for. When your eyes are down on the earth, your faith has nothing to work for. Your hope is deferred. And that's what Satan wants, to take your eyes and move them down on everything here. Now, I didn't say ignore your surroundings. For heaven's sakes, no. Don't absorb them. They're only there temporary. They're passing away. So if you let that person's words that tell you you're never going to be anything... Overcome what God's word says. He who believes can believe for everything. Then you've got the wrong focus. Say amen. Having faith will bring substance. Now, it's the seed. Your faith is God's faith. God's faith is your faith. So don't ever, if you can help it, say I don't have enough faith. How, now, can you see how silly that is? Say, I have all the faith I need. I just need to turn it loose. I just need to exercise it. You're not going to exercise your faith. Now, listen, this is for somebody here right now. If you're always helping people with everybody's problem, it won't build your faith. You've got to find a balance in that so that you've got enough coming in so you have something coming out. So you got to build your faith up. So you get in the word, you say, Holy Spirit, 
reveal it to me. He downloads it in your spirit. It says pray in the Holy, to- Holy Ghost, building up your most holy faith. So it brings it back up to your understanding, and you're able to walk out the map. Most Christians are walking by feelings, and they're guessing because they're still walking by their physical man. Hello? What are we to do with our physical man? Crucify it. Die daily. Why? Because your physical man will have cravings and will tell you the weirdest thing. And you got to do this now. You can't wait. And it will start driving you. That's the, the drive of the flesh. You take care of that by being a good girl or guy and going to your father and say, Father, I need a little crucifixion here. <laughs> it's better that you guys go to, your, go to God and say, help me to die out to myself before your wife nails you. Moving right along. All right, so let's look at this scripture again. Go to Hebrews in 11, if you're still there, and let, we're going to read 1 through 6. Now, faith is the substance. Well, automatically, because God's in it, work towards what you're hoping for. But the problem is we're so double-tongued. Blah, 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 blah. I believe, I believe. Blah, 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 blah. Come on, come on now. Don't laugh at me. I'm trying to overdo it, see? So it becomes such a disgust, maybe we'll stop. Now, faith brings substance to the things hoped for, and it's the very evidence of things we can't see. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith, we understand, now listen, that the ages were framed by men of God, men and women of God, by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. In other words, God took the word, God's men took the word and changed the world. Say amen. By faith, now listen, this is very important. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than that Cain. It was a a sacrifice of faith. It was a sacrifice of faith. And through, uh, through, with, he obtained the witness that he had righteousness. God testifying that his gifts, and through it that He, being, was righteous, and they dead still speaks. So what happened to Abel? I'll read it to you again. I kind of messed that up. They framed their word. By faith, Abel offered a God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain through what he obtained, witness that he is righteous and testifies. What happened to Cain? What what did Cain do to Abel? Okay. Okay. Of course, I know we Cain. Cain killed Abel. Okay, here's the thing. Everyone pinch your flesh. This is the Cain. This is a reminder that your flesh will kill your faith. You're able. Are you able? Yeah. How many times you wanted to do something, your flesh has done something, kept you from it? Wave your hands at me. But why, you, you speak so much truth. Well, the whole purpose of me giving you truth is so that you can practice it so your life is better. Hey, I hope I'm not making you feel miserable. Can you, you should be encouraged. Amen. So going on, let's read this. And so he obtained that testimony. His faith made him righteous. Now look at this next thing. Everybody say Enoch. Now what happened to him? He's still alive. He was taken away, right? Now, what is the church supposed to happen to the church? We're going to be taken away. So in the Old Testament, if you'll just understand this simplicity, people and types and places, the temple, the things of the temple were all types of what will happen in the New Testament. Jesus, types of Jesus. For example, let me use this. The Sabbath is no longer just a day. He's Jesus. Hello, how can you say that? Jesus says, come unto me, I will give you rest. Sabbath means rest. So now we have Jesus in our heart. Don't we have a Sabbath every day? Okay, now listen, listen. 
That means, well, on Saturday, honor the Sabbath. And everybody gets up, you don't honor the Sabbath. Yes, I do. His name is Jesus. Every day. You see, people get hung up on the religious days, the seasons, the times. Now, listen to me very carefully. I'm quoting scripture. Jesus says, ignore them. It's not for you to know the times or the seasons, which God has kept in his own power. But instead, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's Acts chapter 1. Write this down, 7 and 8. The Jews are always looking when they're going to be king again. And that's okay. But he says, I don't want you paying attention when I'm coming. I want you winning souls and moving in power. I'm going to give you power. Go, go lay hands on the sick. Go people, lead people to the Lord and get your eyes off yourself. I'm your father. I'm going to take good care of you. And everyone say, I have faith. Very good. Now you're getting it. You see, a sheep cannot cook for themselves, cannot drink for themselves. The idea behind it is to teach us now. This is the gentle balance. God wants you to work. God wants you to be involved, but not before God. Don't put what you're doing as a gift to God like Cain did. Ask God to help you do things, and it becomes an able. It's in faith. You're doing things with God because you love God. You're not doing things ahead of God or feeling like you're failing God. Your eyes are on you then, not the Lord. Say, lift your eyes from whence cometh your help. And it goes on. By faith, Enoch. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. I love this. Before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But then he goes on. Now, this is the author. But without faith, it's impossible to what? Please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. God's all around you. Believe. Stop looking at the devil's stuff. And that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Oh, my, my, my. Let me encourage you. Bother God. <laughs> Denise, bother God. Here, Father loves you. So listen, this is the way I do it. I only do it as a sort of an idea. I get up in the morning and I say, Father, I present myself to you. And I ask you to cleanse me from anything that could hinder any of my words as I go to prayer. Now, as I pray to you, Father, I want you to change me. I don't want to ask you every day to change me. Because that, that would mean you're stupid. So God, just come in and continue to change me and keep me open so you can surgically make the things right and wrong in my life and remove them. I remain open to you as you, my father. So now as a sheep, I can't feed myself, Father, because it says right there, I'm not really good at it. I want to. So I want to work and I want to do all these things and you want me to and I will. But I don't want to do them without you anymore. I do not want to care for my children without you. And I don't want to go to work just with, without you, without knowing you're with me. Now, it's silly because we all know God's with us and in us. But sometimes it's the acknowledgement that he's there. Do you understand? Amen. Purpose of worship is to get us sing about him, to sing out to others about him, to be aware of him. The idea is to be aware of him. So when you get up, be aware of him. He's, all, he's there, but don't take assumptions. Don't live in your head. Open your mouth and say, hi, God, I love you. And I know Michael does that. A lot of you do that already. But sometimes we forget to do it through the day because the intensement of the day could be tough. Your work, what happens, problems, can pull us into another focus. That's not wrong. Just remember, when you start getting pulled down into that realm, just start praising and refocus. You don't have to stop. It's just a second adjustment. Remember, the devil works in the mind, the physical realm. God works in the spirit realm. So always from the core, always from your core, open your mouth and speak. It's a fountain. Everyone say, thank you, God. 
Now speak it out of there. Thank you, God. And the, you, you see living stuff comes out of living water when you do it from your spirit, man. Slow down a little bit. Catch the rhythm. We're all blessed, very blessed. Let's not miss some of those blessings by kicking our life in our own hands. Now, I'm just laughing because I've done that so many times. We're learning to not do that. Say amen. amen. All right, Colossians chapter 1. I want to show you verse 23. Same point. We're still under that same point. Now, again, this is about continuing in the faith. Remember two kinds of faith. You had your faith, but now God lives in your heart. Now you have his faith and your faith. So now we turn it loose. Well, how do we turn it loose? We get the word of God. We, we get our eyes on the word of God, not the problem. And now our, our faith has began to turn loose. That's why you should be in the word a little bit every day. Why? Because it keeps your faith moving. Folks, even the best of water, I know I've dealt in some good, good water. I did that for one summer, did some fun, almost busted my back years ago. But the water was pure. Listen, listen, the thing about, the thing about is you got a pure water system running in you. You are connected to heaven. And so when we worship and praise, we're pulling freshness out of heaven down into our spirit, bubbling in out of our mouth. It's a continual hose. So if you cap it up, you don't speak, you don't praise, then the water sits. Now listen, I just want to describe this. Now how many has ever had a cup of water maybe on the back of your bed? I like a little water. My, my mouth is uh, dry at night. But if you let that water sit there out of sight, out of mind, for two or three days, and it's open, it's not in a bottle, it gets all kinds of stuff in it. So the principle I'm telling you is don't sit on things. If things are weighing you down, that's a trick. Even though they're real, we don't focus on them. We get no hope. We get no answers by looking at death. By looking at the problem. It would be, I'm going to ham it up now. If I had a dog biting my leg, you have a false leg, you know, and he's chewing on my leg. Think about this. Why would I say, there's a dog biting my leg? I'm making a face, see? Really? No, I would call the things that are not as though they are like God said to do. I call the catcher for the dog. Come. I call for a new place to stay, and you did. Come. But you don't keep the water. We don't keep the water going. Let me encourage you to keep the water bubbling. Why? Because polywogs don't live in flowing water. We'll sit there and have a sip from my Jerusalem cloud. I love you so dearly. And sometimes I, I sound almost smart, but I'm amazed at how many Christians keep on going through. Well, I'm going to get to these one of these days. What? What? You're God's child. And remember, each one of you are his wonderful personal child. So he has the ability to be personal with you all day long and still be that way with every human being at the same time. Amen. So stop questioning how he can do it. Start enjoying he's doing it. Isn't that simple? But remember, Satan makes the complications go. He makes it look hard so we don't try. Remember, stop trying. Start working with Jesus. Let you and Jesus are hooked up. You see, we don't lead. We don't have to come up with the answer. We just go to God, spend some time with him, and say, Lord, you know my day. You know we need a face. And he says, yeah, trust me. Let's go. You see, there's no stress and mess in it. That's what we teach here. That's why the enemy keeps people here away in flocks. Go tell everybody how good the word is. Sure, we have canned music. But if I don't have more people, we're not going to have a band. All right, that's my beef. Let's go on. Let's go to our next point. Charity 
God's love. Now remember, we're, we're showing how all three work together. Now abide in faith, hope, and charity. The greatest of these is God's love in action or charity. Say amen. God's agape love. So let's look at love. I know we know a lot about it. So remember something. We're not talking about human love at all. We're not even talking about your willingness to love. Because there are times God, God's love in you will move beyond how you feel. Now, let me quote a scripture. I got the hiccups right now. Jesus was always moved with compassion. I'm going to show something that God said to me before I went down to Oregon to celebrate a little bit with my family. He said, it doesn't really read like that. Even though the scripture says, I was moved with compassion, it really reads, compassion moved me. Instead of being moved by the compassion, so we look at, well, that was Jesus. He was moved by compassion. That's not what it says in the Greek. In the Greek, it says, compassion moved him. His father's compassion in him moved him to do things. That's part of being led by the Spirit. And so God says, I tell my people, now listen, here's a little prophecy by the word. Tell my people to be patient and wait upon my spirit so that compassion moves them. Who's compassion? God is love, isn't he? And when compassion moves you, you know you don't have to think if it's going to work or not. Huh? It just, God's moving you. You're moving with the flow. You're flowing. So again, it's getting that rhythm, slowing down. Jesus was moved by compassion, but rather compassion, God his Father, moved him. So I salute, when I pray for you, I'm going to say this, and I want it on record, because people got mad at me for this. Everywhere I go, when I pray for you, healing will come. Hello? Who's the healer? Every time you pray for another person, God will show up. Always remember that. It is not your job to get that person healed. Just tell them, where in time I pray, Jesus shows up to heal. Are you willing to receive that healing? And there's where the problem lies, in the receiving part. So it isn't me trying to believe God so I can have a miracle working power. I've always had, and ever since I was born again, laid down the sick, and people have been healed. Nobody told me to have disbelief. <laughs> Nobody told me that, Denise. I couldn't do that. You see, unbelief creeps into the church. It creeped into Jesus' disciples. Why couldn't we cast it out? He says, because of your unbelief. Well, listen, you, you let God do all the work, but be really good at releasing God out of your mouth, out of your actions. Why? Slow down and stop trying to promote God. Listen, and just release him. Silver and gold I have not. But what I have, I'm going to give it to you. That's what I do here on, on the pulpit here. I'm giving you Jesus as best as I know so that you can absorb it and paint pictures with it so your faith starts bringing substance to it. So your life starts coming together. So Satan's going to immediately on Saturday night keep you from coming Sunday morning. Saturday night is the Sabbath. In other words, rest so you're ready for the awakening Sunday morning people always mess stuff up then we make it religious don't be a religious person just tell them I see you got religion no I have Jesus and I walk with him every day the best I know how right Becky yeah. amen she says alright love in action 1 Corinthians please look at this verse 13 verse 11 through 13 Paul says this he says when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. 
For now I see through in a mirror dimly. I don't have everything to, in, into view. But then face to face. Wait a minute. I see through a mirror dimly, but then face to face. So he's talking about two time periods. Right now, I don't have all of it, but I'm going after God, so I know. But then when we get changed and raptured, we'll be standing face to face with Jesus. Say amen. You got it. It's really not hard. The gospel is not hard if we keep rehearsing phraseologies properly. Okay. For now we see through a mirror. Now then face to face. Now listen. But now abides faith. Boy, my mouth. But now abides faith, hope, and charity or love. These three, but the greatest of all three is what? Charity or love in action. Say amen. So how do they work, Pastor Kerry? Well, first of all, faith comes by hearing. We receive Jesus. He comes in. Now our faith and God's faith become one. All the negative stuff's kicked out of our spirit, man. We still have bad thinking, and our flesh is still out of order. But from our spirit, man, we can walk with God free. Can you say amen? amen. But people don't. We're exercised to walk from our feelings, from our emotions, by what we see only, by, by what we hear. Now, that's not bad, but it is bad, but that's all you can concentrate on. Say, oh, me, everyone. And that's what the devil's doing right now. Look at the last four years. I mean, look at the last four years. What has God, I mean, excuse what has the devil been trying to get the world to focus on? How broken everything is. Well, let me ask you, who's the light of the world? You are. Now, both, okay? You have, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. You have Jesus. We know who's the light. But where does Jesus live? In our heart. He's the light bulb of your light. Amen. And if your flesh has covered him up, how's anybody going to see Jesus? So that's why we go with them in the morning, have them polish our bulb. So the light projects out of us. Light, how many know when you, in complete darkness, Daryl, and you turn on that light, it goes, projects way out there, doesn't it? Amen. And if you have that light that's spun in a 360 all the time, it would really project out there. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be cool, Tina? BJ, wouldn't that be cool? You have it. But it's going off the whole time. The closer and more full of God you get, the more that light goes out and penetrates the darkness. Now, it's not a light you can see. It's a light strictly designed for Satan and his kingdom. Uh-oh. Yeah, because when you turn on the light, what happens to darkness? It runs at 186,000 miles per second. The trouble is with a lot of Christians laugh at me, because I was one. We're so caught up in our life and trying to live for God, we got only a little teeny pen light coming out of there. And it's only when we... Focus our prayers that we shoot the light at them. No, listen, go to God, have him polish you off, clean you off, and project Jesus everywhere you go. Don't be obnoxious, just project him. You don't have to even utter a word. Just project him. I used to stand people up years ago just because I saw that what God's power could do. I mean, rows of people. I mean, please don't think me of anything. And I would project Jesus on them. And the whole role would fall under. Did you ever witness anything like that? We all did. Now, how does that happen? Because of what the things I'm sharing with you. Why would God teach me all of that to leave it to myself and me die away and the disciples I left are just a few? No, God wants me to share it with you so you go share it with others. Start teaching and preaching. Start bringing people to church. See, the people need to come and be invited to church. And, and it's because they're not. 
Because we assume if we do, they're going to say no. How do you know? God might have visited them the night before and says, Daryl's coming. Go to church with him. But if we have not, because we, there you go. We're not aggressive enough with the light. You got the light under your tent, and you can see all your stuff. Get out there. Say amen. And, and don't defend the gospel. Just project the gospel. All right. I preached enough. A couple of points. All right. So when he was a child, he became a man. He put away those things. Point one, church, this is talking about God's agape love. Loving people beyond what you see, what you hear. It's talking about prayer as part of that. Because when you pray for people, some people, it says to pray for your enemies. Hello? When you start praying, God's love transcends and his anointing transcends everything else. Two, we have an inward child that's an irresponsibility. All of us periodically face that. Hello? And here's a scripture for us. This is for all of us. He that thinketh you stand, take heed lest you fall. So overconfidence without God is not a good thing. Going back into our old habitual habits, listen, I used to get frustrated a lot. I don't get frustrated anymore. I kind of laugh at it. But there's, I had to grow out of that. And then if I decide, I'm going to overcome this, now you're in the way. Open up and say, God, take it out of me. Help make adjustments. Help me to admit I need help. Then the process goes into operation. All of us have flaws. So I've always learned this. What we cover, God will expose. What, huh? Huh? What we cover to hide from God, God will expose so we can be helped. Because if you don't know have an infection, you could die. So he doesn't do in front of everybody. But here's a neat thing. If you just go to God and say, hey, Lord, I need some work, then you know what he does? He covers us. No one's going to get into your personal business because you're my child. I'm covering you. You're not hiding our flaws. You're going to God and say, hey, I've been really rough this week. I need some operation. God then brings you into his bosom and covers you. So what it's saying to us is, if you run around acting like there's nothing wrong, you're not honest with God, you never pray, then what happens, you're going to be exposed. Now, God's not going to make you look naked. You're just going to be naked. People are going to say, hey, you got a problem. And you, it might be everybody else trying to tell you. So I'm not referring to you, please. Don't put those shoes on. These are things to help other people. Because some of you know dozens of people in this operative bill. Hey, I know a place where you can get some real wisdom from God. Would you like to go? Yeah. And then they go, do you have a band? Are you going to serve food? How big is the church? You see? Ah, pa, 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 pa. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. When I became a man, I put those childish things away. I want to know more about you, my father. You see? And that's where we're all at. I believe you're at that place. So charity is all the hope, all the faith operating with you and Jesus, doing good for others. It's good news. Two, we have an inward child, an irresponsible child that tries to get out of hand, try to keep him in check. Can you say amen? amen. And then finally, let's look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 11, and then we'll dismiss you. Bless you, fathers. Amen. amen. Verse 7, so beloved, let us love one another. Now that word love means God's love one another. Love beyond what you see, hear, touch. Go the extra mile, you know. I'm amazed at Christians. Just do what they're expected to do, and they don't go the extra mile. I remember one time, you know, sad, but it, 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 it was honor your pastor day, and everybody forgot about Linda and I. See, sometimes we're so busy, caught up about other things. 
I really didn't, didn't care too much. I forgot all about it. But some brothers stepped in and saw that we got a little blessing in Arnold. It's really important to build one another up, honor one another, to make the less feel more important. Hello. Now, if I come around and make you feel good, doesn't mean I think you're less. <laughs> no. It's the parts that we that need a little more loving. Give them a little more loving. This is your body. Love it. A lot of people say, you know, I feel of God that I come in there and be a, a minister for God. There, I said, number one, can you love the people here? Can you wash their feet? And if you can't, go back to school. Hello. Because if you can't love the, the people that God loves, you have no business trying to teach them. Hello. It, it just doesn't make sense. Well, let's get past that. Look at James, oh, excuse me, John, 1 John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for, for the love, of, love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God. Now, he's talking about not just being lovey-dovey. He's talking about the people that display the true love of God. You know they are saved. They're truly born-again believers. Not just because they patch on the back and say, I love you, brother. Love you, brother. I tell you what, breaks my heart, but I have ministered to a lot of multicolored churches. And you know, Satan messes with cultures. And he tries to get them in all kinds of boxes and colors and everything. No offense to anyone. God does not see color. He doesn't see indifference. He sees us as one big family. Can you say amen? amen. And so we want to be careful. I'm Scottish. And you know, the Scottish people went through hell and back because of the Scott background. So I have some things that's in my Scottish nature I need to wash out. Can you say amen? <laughs> Nobody laughed. Aren't you glad I don't come in here with kilts and a bagpipe, huh? And, and try to encourage you that you have to do this to become a better Christian. Isn't that what the Jewish people are trying to tell you? You're not a real Christian if, until you become another Jew. What's all this stuff going around all the time trying to drag everybody into the Jewish faith? No, we're supposed to bring them into the Christian faith. Neither Jew nor Gentile, bond nor free, male nor female. What do we do? We run to a meeting and they convert us. That's not the way it works. I was there when it got set up. And I told them, warned them, do not try to convert somebody if you haven't known anything you have to say, if you don't know God good enough, amen. Leave, leave it up to the God people. They're trained for that. All right, so you with me? God is love. Can you say amen? amen. So it goes on further and it goes on. So the, the God's love is manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into this world system that we might live through him. How do we live? Now, here's where people get it wrong. They're living for God. And that's okay. You just got to live through him. Remember, Satan alters it a little bit. If you're working, now listen to me carefully. If you're working hard to be with God, to please God, you're on a works program, not a faith program. God is not requiring you to work, work, work. He's required you to be with him and believe, believe, believe. Say amen. How many's heard this term? Just hang in there, baby. Amen. How many's heard that term? Now listen to the wisdom in that. How long can you hang in the air with your hands? That's what Satan's trick is. He's getting us lovely Christians to try to live for God uh, unpalable, un mistakable, holy life, glory to God. No, that's religion, and God does not require that. Well, it says, be holy, for I'm holy. Yeah. How many of you know it says that? So what is holiness there, Mike? It means get yourself set apart, yeah. like I'm set apart. I'm different than the rest. Get yourself away from the rest and become holy with me. Now, who makes us holy? God. Do you make yourself holy? All right. Anything? Okay. 
All right, so everyone say, I live through him. Say it again. I live through him. Now, you're going to have to help, have help. But when you go to God, come to church, keep going, we'll encourage you to do it. Live through him. Live through him. In him we live, we move, and have our being. Live through him. When you pray for the sick, pray through him. When you use the name of Jesus, pray through him in the name of Jesus. Watch me. Don't pray from here. Everyone put your hand on your head. Don't pray from here. Pray from here. It, slow down. God, I love you. Right out of the emotions to the point where you're about to just well up. Why? Because that's your spirit, man. But, but, oh, Lord, you know what you're going to do? I'm, I'm in a hurry. Sorry about this little short prayer. Well, God hears those too. But it doesn't have any of the substance God's looking for. Bring substance out. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Are you hoping for your family to be saved? Speak the word, bring substance, and thank him. You got to bring the seed, the word to that. Well, God knows. Yes, he needs you to speak the word, sweetie. And finishing. I keep seeing you stand. You're so beautiful, dear. Takes away my breath. And point 10, uh, I mean, excuse me, verse 10 says, In this, the love of God that is manifest, that we, we love God, and that he first loved us, and we love his son. And his son became the way. The, the word perpetuation, perpetuation simply means when there wasn't a way, Jesus became a way. That's all it means. I am the way, the truth, the life. So when we walk in Christ, listen, you might not see an answer, but we don't look for the answer. We look to Jesus. He knows the answer. And then he will download what we're to do. But if we just go in and start to do what we know to do and start doing that, you are ahead of God. You need to put the salt on the devil. You need to release the anointing on him and stop frailing your arms and words. Speak with power. I can whisper and blow the devil right off out of this planet. And he'll come back. But I mean a planet, but out of this room. I've done it. But it isn't the volume. It's, well, let me say it better. It isn't the loudness. It's the volume of bringing out God when you speak. Jesus did not speak like, hi, yeah, how you doing, kid? He never talked like that. He spoke a very slowly and right to the heart, people. Peter, do you really love me? Ah, oh, Lord, you know I love you. Peter, learn to do that with your children. Learn to do that with your friends. And they're going, what's wrong with you? Did you have a stroke? No, I'm slowing down my speech and bringing out God in it. Instead of just talking the talk, I decided to walk the walk. Well, this morning, did you get something out of that? Did it bless you? Now abide of faith, hope, and charity, or love. The greatest of this is love in action. Why? Now you understand why we need what we need to have. We need to have a beginning faith to believe in God. And then we invite God in and his faith and our faith take over. Now we need to get our eyes off the world into the word so we can see what he's got because he has an invisible kingdom. You'll never know anything about until you get into the word and can see the pictures of it. Once you see a picture and God says, here's the money to go, now you can go and experience that truth. For when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide us into all truth and bring back to your remembrance the things wherewith God has spoken to you. That's John 16. Did I get that on tape too? I don't know. All right. So Lord, we just pray over this wonderful congregation. We bless those coming in through satellite. Lord, we hope this gets out and blesses those that hear it.
be encouraged the body of Christ. Help us to pass it along to others who may need to hear these truths. Help us to embrace your word because the word has you in it. And the word is you. And Lord, increase our faith, increase the hope, and Lord, bless them as they go. Happy Father's Day, everyone. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Yeah.